Imagine you're a goldfish. You've been chilling in a cozy tank all your life, swimming around your plastic castle, living your best freshwater life. Then, one day, someone decides to toss you into the ocean. Bam! Instant fishy panic. You're in the same water world, right? So why is your body acting like you just licked a battery? Let's dive in, literally, and find out why freshwater fish can't handle the salty sea and why saltwater fish can't handle the river. It's not just water, it's science. Here's the thing, all water is not created equal. Fresh water has very low concentrations of dissolved salts and minerals, while salt water like oceans is loaded with sodium, chloride, magnesium, and other ions. It's basically the soup of the sea. Fish, like any other living creature, have semi-permeable membranes in their cells. This means water can pass through, but not everything else. And that's where the trouble begins. Let's talk about osmosis, the fancy term for how water moves across membranes to balance concentrations. In fresh water, Water, the concentration of salt inside the fish is higher than outside. Water flows in, constantly. So freshwater fish need to pee a lot to get rid of excess water. In saltwater, it's the opposite. The salty ocean pulls water out of the fish's body. So saltwater fish drink a lot of seawater and actively pump salt out. It's like trying to survive on the wrong side of a biological tug of war. What happens if you put the wrong fish in the wrong water? Disaster. A freshwater fish in saltwater? It gets dehydrated. Water leaves its body, organs fail, and it's game over. A salt saltwater fish in fresh water? It swells up like a water balloon. Cells absorb too much water, and it can literally burst from the inside out. So no, you can't toss Nemo into a lake and expect him to thrive. He'd be gone before you could say, just keep swimming. But wait, some fish are rule breakers. Of course, nature loves to be weird. Enter the Urihaline fish, species that can live in both salt and fresh water. Salmon are born in fresh water, migrate to the ocean, then return upstream to spawn. Eels, bull sharks, and mollies can all switch environments. These fish have special adaptations. Their kidneys, their gill membranes change, and they basically become walking chemistry labs. So yeah, built some fish different. are built different. Why it matters more than you think. This isn't just about fish feeling uncomfortable. It's about survival, biodiversity, and even climate change. As sea levels rise and fresh water mixes with salt water in coastal areas, fish populations are shifting. Species are disappearing from their native zones and popping up where they don't belong. And that means trouble, not just for fish, but for ecosystems, fishing industries, and yes, even your seafood dinner. Could we engineer fish to survive anywhere? In theory? Maybe. With gene editing, scientists could potentially modify fish to handle both environments. But would that be ethical? Or even safe for ecosystems? And let's be honest, just because we can build a salt-tolerant goldfish doesn't mean we should. Nature's had this system working for millions of years. Maybe we should just let the fish do their thing in the right water. What if humans had to switch between freshwater and salt water? Okay, imagine if humans were like urihaline fish, jumping between lakes and oceans just to stay alive. Sounds fun, right? Except Nope, your kidneys would riot. The human body is incredibly picky about salt balance. That's why we can't drink seawater. If you tried to live in salt water, you'd dehydrate faster than a raisin in the sun. Your cells would lose water, your blood pressure would crash, and your organs would be like, we're out. Now picture swimming in fresh water for too long. Your body would start absorbing too much water, throwing off electrolytes, swelling cells, and messing with your brain. Basically, not a good look. So yes, fish are way cooler than we give them credit for. Fun fact, whales and dolphins are marine mammals, so they evolved to survive in salt water, but they don't drink seawater. They get hydration from the food they eat. That's like getting all your hydration from sushi. Respect. Can fish adapt over time? Here's a wild thought. What if a freshwater fish accidentally found itself in salt water and somehow survived long enough to pass on its genes? Well, over millions of years, that's kind of what happened. Evolution isn't instant, but it's relentless. Tiny mutations that help fish tolerate saltier or fresher water can add up generation after generation. That's how some ancient fish lineages ended up becoming salt water species, while others adapted to life in rivers and lakes. The evolutionary split created fish that were finely tuned to their habitats, like precision biological machines. It's not just about salt, either. Temperature, oxygen levels, pH, even predators all play a role. Some fish in Africa live in saltwater lakes with salinity levels higher than the ocean. Others can hibernate in mud during dry seasons, then rehydrate and swim off like nothing happened. Freshwater fish and saltwater fish aren't just divided by taste. They're separated by millions of years of evolution. One bloats, one shrivels. Neither one likes surprises. Drop a comment. If you were a fish, would you rather live in a lake or an ocean? We reply to every comment, and your idea might become our next video, like this video. Subscribe to YX for more science that makes you say, wait, what? Turn on notifications so you don't miss what's next.